Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt and we are broadcasting from the 2021 USA Cycling Paracycling Road National Championships hosted by CAF in partnership with CAF, USA Cycling and US Paralympics. Our next guest, Paralympic hopeful Lyra Doderlein. How are you doing, Lyra? I'm great, Bob. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. So racing, you're, you're going to be racing here in beautiful Boise again. What, what events are you going to be doing? I'll be doing the time trial, the criterium race, the road race, and hopefully the road ra uh, relay. So you're somebody who has been making up for lost time because for the first 14 years of your life, uh, from the time you were born with their legs being deformed and then parents being told, birth parents being told that uh, you, you need medical help that they couldn't afford and then you get adopted by a family from Arizona. And for the first 14 years, you really didn't have sport, correct? Yeah. And then when the doctor said, you know, these legs are just going to continue to get heavier, you've got arm crutches and leg braces, you are going to potentially do some damage to your arms. At that point, he suggested amputation. What was your response? Well, I just said cut them off. <laughs> I pretty much just decided that it was the point in my life where I wanted to gain more mobility, get the help that I needed to do the things that I wanted to do, and from then on, that was my decision. How did it change your life? It completely changed my life. I mean, from then on, I was able to do so much more than I thought I would be able to do, including sports. Before then, I didn't even know what adaptive sports were, so to know what they were and to be able to have so many opportunities already is completely life-changing. And when you talk about opportunities, you're on the U.S. developmental team for sled hockey. Yes. Correct. And unfortunately, sled hockey is not a sport for women. Mm -hmm. at this point in the Paralympics, which seems a little odd, but, but it isn't. You also, uh, you know, you've played, you were the 21st duck, right? You get for the Anaheim, uh, Anaheim Ducks. That was pretty fun. It was amazing. And then you find hand cycling. You're on our CAF hand cycling team, which is great. And then when did you find winter sports? Well, besides sled hockey, um, there's one time that I was invited out to a clinic from the U.S. Paranordic ski coach herself, yes. um, Beth Ann. Um, she's pretty much one of my favorite coaches now because uh, she was pretty much at a camp and she invited me out to come to this clinic out in Denver, I think it was, called the Ski Spectacular. And before then, I didn't really think of ever skiing or doing anything besides hockey um, and cycling, of course. Um, but I guess I just decided to take the chance, went out to the camp, um, and it was kind of like hockey and cycling. I, as soon as I hit the snow, I just fell in love with it. And it is so similar to hockey for me, but not only that, it was also another challenge that I wanted to overcome. Learning everything that came with the sport was amazing. Um, and since then, I've been competing probably for a year and a half now. So you have gone to places in the world that not a lot of people have gone who are, what, are you 18 now? Yep. 18 years old. Where have you traveled to? Uh, <laughs> I have traveled all through the country, but I think my favorite spot so far, I've traveled outside the country twice now, once to Toronto, Canada for a rivalry series against Canada two years ago. But last year I had the privilege to go to Slovenia for the first time which was incredible. It was my first time outside the country uh, to Europe since being adopted. Um, it was just an incredible experience. And when we're talking about Paralympics, and that's coming up this, this winter, you have an opportunity potentially to make the team because you're into Nordic skiing, you're into biathlon. So you've done, you know, talk a little bit about getting into those sports. And the, the cool thing about those sports is it seems like there's more opportunities Paralympic-wise. Oh, for sure. Uh, I mean, every sport is different. I mean, coming into skiing, it was really amazing because there are so many events that you can compete in. Right. Uh, aside from skiing itself, there's also biathlon and sprint races and middle distance and long distance. And so the, it was kind of never ending options for me. And it's just exciting because not only do you get to race, but you get to do all these different events. Um, so hopefully I can qualify for the Paralympics. At 18 years old. At 18 years old. That would be pretty fun, especially since you've only been doing this stuff for four years. 
Yeah. <laughs> Did you have you surprised yourself the, just at how quickly you've adapted to all these different sports? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think I've blown my mind a little every time I try a new sport because for a second I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I can totally do this. And I do it for even just a few minutes and I fall in love with it. And from then on, I just, it just creates this passion and fire in me and just want to do it even more. Um, and when that happens, it's like nothing stopping me. So Oksana Masters, very similar, born, uh, adopted out of Russia, same type of si situation. Um, also a, a double amputee. How close are you guys? She feels like a sister to me at this point. Yeah. yeah. And she's been to Paralympics in rowing and in winter sports uh, and in hand cycling. So what have you learned from her? I think I've learned that no matter what happens, and no matter the struggles that you come across, that you always have to push past them and to never give up on yourself, most importantly. And you've also gotten into a little surfing, adaptive surfing as well. Of all these different sports, what's great is you, you have so much stuff you can do now. <laughs> For somebody who had really nothing to do, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you just, you're just happy doing whatever sport's out there. Exactly, yes. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, when you look at where you've come in these four years, how, how important has CAF been in, your, in, in this journey? I don't know where I would be, honestly, without CAF. They have made every opportunity available to me, and because of that, that that's probably the biggest reason that I am where I am now. That's so cool. Um, and this course, this crit course, being able to compete in front of big crowds, right? That's pretty fun. Yeah, it's exciting. And, oh wait, and last week you were at the uh, tour of America's Dairylands, Toad. Yes, yes, in Wisconsin. <laughs> in Wisconsin. Did you race there last year too, or in 2019? Yes, we did. Fun? Oh, it was amazing. Such a, it's so amazing to race among so many people, just in the town, have all the kids cheering you on, even so many people that you get to meet every year at these events, it's amazing. What, what have you learned about yourself that maybe you didn't know before through all this? Kind of learned that even though like it is hard to learn a new sport, but when you have the, the passion and the love for the sport like I've been able to have and had the privilege to have that when you want something, you, you push your limits and you do as much as you can to achieve those. Love it. Lyra, it's always such a treat to get to chat with you. I just... Knowing you for these last few years, just seeing how far you've come and just how your smile lights up the room. Th thank you for taking time. Thank you, Bob. Lyra Dordelein has been our guest again. My name is Bob Abbott. This is Breakfast with Bob. Catch you next time. See ya.